Hello. So, laser is essentially an oscillator. It comprises of an optical amplifier and this amplifier is fed uh, through an input. The output of this amplifier is again fed back. This is a positive feedback loop. Let me call this explicitly the feedback. And of course, this amplifier itself requires uh, some power supply. This input produces an output. Part of the output is fed back as a feedback. And uh, it is this output that we are interested in. So one thing you will quickly realize is uh, this amplifier as associated with uh, a bandwidth. And what that entails is that if you have an input within the bandwidth of the amplifier, that input gets amplified. Uh, you take part of that output and feed it back as the input. Uh, this process of feedback and then again the signal going through and getting amplified is precisely what we uh, what leads to this large output at a specific frequency. So now, of course, there are uh, two conditions that must be satisfied. The first one being that the amplifier must be such that the gain is larger than the loss associated with the system. Uh, the round trip gain, which accounts for uh, all the losses and so on, uh, we'll come back to this term later. The round trip gain is actually finite. The second important characteristics is that of the feedback. You want the feedback to be such that the signal that is fed back is in phase with the input. That would imply that the, the round trip uh, phase accumulated, if you like, should be uh, in multiples of 2 pi. n times uh, 2 pi, where n is an integer, is the kind of phase relationship that you need to enforce. So this amplification continues to grow, but then there is a limit to it. The limit is set by the saturation of the amplifier and uh, quickly depict it in this fashion. What I'm plotting here is the power Think of it as the output power if you like and on the left I am plotting either the gain or the loss. So you see you do begin with uh, for small powers, for small inputs you do it with a finite gain and there is a level of loss which you need to contend with in the system. So what happens is that this, this as the gain is very large, you get a large output. But then beyond a certain point, as the output, as the power increases, uh, the gain saturates. And then there is a time at which the gain will actually become equal to the loss. And this is, this is essentially the level at which steady state power is generated. By steady state, I mean that the power doesn't change in time. And clearly, to obtain the steady state power, one must have the situation where the gain is equal to loss. So you see that this oscillator, in summary, comprises of a variety of things, an amplifier with a gain saturation mechanism. It has a feedback mechanism. It has some sort of a frequency selection mechanism, which, which is what makes... Uh, the laser light so uh, monochromatic and uh, distinct uh, and you also require some sort of an output coupling scheme. So pictorially I want to represent these, uh, these in this manner. Uh, key elements of a laser and these key elements are sort of common to all lasers although you will see that uh, the elements would take uh, 
different specific forms for different lasers, but these elements are fundamental to the creation of a laser. So the first element is the amplifying medium or the active medium. This is the medium which acts like an amplifier. That is, I put in the input light and what I get is amplified output, right? And this amplifying medium contains uh, atoms, molecules, quantum wells, uh, uh, all variety of possibilities exist for the amplifying medium. So this is a key element number one. The second key element <clears throat> of every laser is this business of feedback and that feedback is implemented by putting in and uh, a mirror that basically reflects back the optical field, the amplifying medium and this amplifying medium amplifies the light like discussed before and then now there is a, a feedback. So as these come back, it is amplified even more and this process repeatedly happens back and forth and this is the notion of uh, feedback and amplification. The feedback in typical lasers is achieved through using uh, mirrors, uh, but there are other variety of implementations that, that are present uh, when one talks about feedback. The third key element in the making of the laser is clearly that this phenomena of amplification and feedback is not going to happen without some input. So one has to pay for it. And that is what I'm calling it as some pumping mechanism. That is the the amplification of the desired laser output is arising out of drawing energy from an external uh, source which is called the pump which basically replenishes the energy of the amplifier. So this is the, the pumping part of the key element of the laser and again there are variety of pumping mechanisms where you can put in energy through electronic collisions or one can put in energy through a light at a different frequency. So there are multiple ways of uh, supplying this energy to the amplifier uh, or the active amplifying medium or the active medium to obtain laser. The, the fourth, uh, the key element of the laser is the fact that I need to now have a mechanism in which I can extract this power out of the laser. So this extracting is as important as the generation itself, extracting the power. So there is a lot of power that is built up within the amplifier and if I do not extract that power in an optimal manner, what would happen is that this power which is within the amplifier itself right, would actually lead to saturation of the gain and that would in turn decrease the amount of power that I extract. So a judicious amount of power needs to be extracted so that one gets the largest possible power without compromising on the performance of the, of the laser uh, device itself. Clearly, uh, the design of a laser requires a careful balancing of the losses and gain and uh, one note of caution that every step in this process, the individual, all the four steps are actually opportunities for energy to be lost. So uh, it is that management of the loss or essentially, you know, the, the lasers came into being, uh, as I said, only after physicists learned how atoms could be operated efficiently as thermodynamic engines. Now, uh, clearly there are, there are multiple complications associated with this, with such a setup. 
the way the light is amplified depends on the atoms themselves and interestingly you will see as the light as the feedback increases the the light becomes so strong that it in turn affects the atoms themselves so you see that the atoms in one scenario it appears as though the the atoms simply provide the light to increase in intensity on the other hand one finds that the light itself dictates how the atoms are going to provide the feedback and so on so you see that this is a extremely strongly coupled system where both light and atoms need to be dealt with at equal footing so light plus atoms atoms or molecules as the case may be are strongly coupled and these need to be uh, these need to be described in a self consistent manner another complication which i want to certainly highlight is this notion of a feedback you will quickly realize that this is a positive feedback and that would imply that a small noise or perturbation will also amplify and this would lead to a basically a erratic unstable device right so there are these multiple issues that need to be kept in mind before one can actually come up with a with a functioning laser so we will see that we will deal with terms like gain loss threshold uh, steady state operation saturation the mode structure frequency pulling line width and so on so these are going to be multiple aspects of a laser so what i would like you to do is to basically write a note on the possible characteristics that you would like an ideal laser to have and then we can discuss all these aspects in the next lecture